Hello, welcome back to the exciting conclusion of Science Friction. This is part two of today's story. It's in two parts. So if you clicked on this link first, go back and read the one video read. I'm doing the reading. You can watch the video below this one for the first part. Anyway, part two. We met the next week. Mom brought snacks again. And once again, we couldn't agree on anything. Finally, I said, look, we can't keep going like this. If we don't pick a project now, we're toast. Planning is important, Ellen said. So is toast, Benji said. We weren't planning. We're arguing, I said. We are not, Ellen said. We are too, I said. Are not. Are too. Are too, D2, Benji shouted. You're the only one who's arguing, Ellen said. We argued about that until it was time for her to go. Third week, third meeting. You might as well have been in third grade. Ellen and I argued. Benji seemed fascinated by his ability to touch the ceiling near my bookcase. I actually thought about moving that pile of clothes, but I sort of hated to spoil his fun. George kept his thoughts to himself, though he did seem interested in checking out some of the books I'd stacked up next to the hamper, which surprised me. We finally agreed that since we couldn't agree on a project, everyone would bring an idea next week and we'd vote for the best one. Week four. I voted for my project. Ellen voted for hers. Benji voted for Albert Einstein. George didn't vote, but he did offer the use of his quarter. Look, I said. It's obvious we can't agree, so let's each start an actual project. Next week, we'll pick the best one, and everyone will work on it. Week 5. We each decided we needed another week. Everyone left right after our snack. When Mom came back to the dishes, she sniffed, looked at my piles of clothes, and said, You really need to think about picking up. She was right. I was getting, it was getting a little stuffy, but I couldn't pick things up just then. I needed to think about my projects. So I found a more elegant solution. I opened a window. Week 6. What's that supposed to be? I asked Benji when he lugged his project into my room. He looked down at the pile of popsicle sticks and coat hanger wires attached to a board with bits of duct tape, bent nails, and large blobs of glue. It's a roller coaster. You're kidding. He shrugged. It sort of fell apart. I'm not great with tools. I figured he'd make a joke about the project, but he just sighed and said, Sorry, I let the group down. I looked over at Ellen, who hadn't brought anything. Did you start a project? I'd expected her to drag in a display charting the life cycle of Gucci handbags. I tried to spot comments, she said. It would be so great to discover a new one. Dad bought me this excellent telescope last month, but it's been cloudy every night. I waited for her to say she was sorry, but she didn't. I guess the word wasn't in her vocabulary. I glanced at George. He shook his head and spread his empty hands. Then I looked at my desk, where I'd balanced a large board and contained my experiments. I'd grown crystals in various solutions. I guess we'll have to use mine, I said. Notice how the copper sulfate produces a... Uh... Just then, Mom appeared in the hallway with a tray. She pushed at the door, then she pushed harder. There still wasn't enough space for her to get in. She gave the door a good, hard shove. I could feel the floor shake. On my desk, the whole display started to slide. I tried to dash across the room, but I tripped on a pair of jeans. All of my hard work crashed to the floor. I lay on my stomach, staring at the icky mess. Mom put the tray down in the hall and squeezed through the doorway. That's it! I've had it! This room is a disgrace! She grabbed a handful of clothes from the floor. I expected her to drop them somewhere or toss them. Instead, her eyes opened wide. Then she went, Ew! I looked over. Under the clothes was... Something? It was dark green and shriveled. What in the world is that? I leaned closer. Oh my god. It was some kind of food. That does it, Mom yelled. You are grounded until this room is clean. But disgusting! She shook her head and walked out. I stood there, staring at the thing. Whatever it was, I hadn't put it there. I was a slob, but I wasn't a pig. Behind me, Ellen whispered something. I spun toward her. If you mention your maid one more time, I'm going to scream. Ellen flinched and backed away from me. I realized I was already screaming. I just wanted to tell you I was sorry, she said. What? I'm sorry it's my fault. Your fault. She shrugged. I'm allergic to wheat. I let her words roll around in my brain for a second hoping I'd somehow misunderstood what she meant. But the equations only seemed to have one solution. Ellen didn't eat bread. Ellen's plate was always empty. 
Ellen had just apologized. Are you telling me you've been stashing sandwiches in my room? Not sandwiches, just the bread. The turkey was delicious. Why? I didn't want your mom to think I didn't like her food, and I felt kind of funny about mentioning my allergy. I try so hard to fit in, but it's not easy sometimes. I'm not good at it like you are. You're just so comfortable with stuff. What? You don't worry about what people think, she said. I'm, I worry so much that I always end up saying the wrong thing. And you're so smart. I have to study so hard. I have to keep everything so carefully organized or I get lost. But you, you're so good at science. Oh, I definitely need to think about what she just said. I guess I've been making a lot, more, a lot of assumptions. But at the moment, I had a more urgent issue to deal with. I looked at the moldy slab. How many? Every week, she said. Where? She went to various clothes heaps in my room and revealed the slices of bread, which ranged from slightly moldy to totally overgrown. Benji picked up the pieces and laid them out on my desk. If the bread hadn't been buried in my wardrobe like some sort of ancient Egyptian funeral offering, I probably would have found it pretty fascinating. I'm sorry, Ellen said again. I'll explain to your mom that this was my fault, and I'll help you clean your room. Okay? If there's one thing I'm really good at, it's straightening up. She looked at me like she expected me to turn her down. She seemed really sorry. Sure, you can help. That would be wonderful. I'll help too, Benji said. George nodded. Thanks, I said as we tackled the top layer. This is great, but we still don't have a project. Sure we do. I was so shocked by the voice, I just stared at George. We do? Benji asked. George nodded and pointed at the bread. Mold, Ellen said. We have a whole display of the stages of mold growth. Yeah, I said. George was right. We had pieces of bread for each week. But is that enough? It was hard to imagine a whole project from some slices of moldy bread. Then I realized it wasn't just about mold growth. Look, I said, flipping a piece over. Ellen nodded. Mayonnaise is an, it's acidic. Yep, we have an example of mold inhibition too. We just have to figure out a way to display it so you can see both sides. Great, Ellen said. What if it's still not enough? Oh, there might be some more, Benji said. What do you mean, I asked. Promise you won't kill me? No. Promise you won't make it slow and painful? No. He shrugged. I sort of don't like turkey a whole lot. Oh, please don't tell me you've been stashing meat in my room. He nodded. Where? I sniffed and looked around. Benji pointed at the top of my bookcase. You slimeball, I said as I climbed a chair to take a look. Oh, yuck. There were five piles of turkey in various stages of decomposition, neatly laid out from left to right. It was absolutely disgusting. It was also pretty fascinating, and I guess I was relieved to know the smell wasn't coming from my clothes. I looked over at George. What about you? Is there anything you don't like? He lifted a stack of books to reveal baby carrots. Good grief. How could all of you just hide food away like that? Well, Helen said. This place is kind of a dump. If you don't care, why should we? When in Slobovia, Benji said, do as the slobs do. I couldn't argue with them. All they'd done was sink to my level. Maybe this was one area where it wouldn't hurt for me to try to be a bit more, bit more like Ellen, but just a bit. No way would my pens ever match my wardrobe. We got back to work. At five, I asked Ellen, don't you have a piano lesson? It won't hurt me to miss one. She flipped open her cell phone and made a call. Right after that, George left. I figured he had some sort of appointment he couldn't cancel. But I was grateful he'd help for as long as he could. There was still plenty to do. The rest of us kept working. I found it! Benji screamed a couple minutes later. What? I asked. The floor! I stared down at the spot where he pointed. So that's what it looks like. Nice rug, Ellen said. Thanks. I forgot I had one. Just as we were finishing, George returned, holding a beautiful display case with sections for the bread, turkey, and carrots. It even had mirrors in it to show both sides of the specimens. Wow, I said. That's perfect. Did you build it? He nodded. You're a genius with your hands, I said. He smiled. Ellen patted him on the shoulder. And you don't waste time talking unless you have something to say. I'll do the caption, Benji said. He started coming up with these awful puns that made everyone groan, like, Spore score and seven weeks ago, rotten roll and bacteria girl. But we laughed too, and I knew Miss Adler had a great sense of humor, so I figured it wouldn't hurt to use Benji's titles. 
Ellen, who had beautiful handwriting, lettered the signs. I typed a report to go along with the display. As we all finished up the project together, I realized I discovered an important scientific principle. It had nothing to do with mold, but everything to do with chemistry. Some elements combined quickly, others combined slowly, and some didn't combine at all unless you mixed them together under high heat and intense pressure. We got an A. Miss Adler complimented us on our planning. I'm impressed, she wrote, that you worked so nicely as a group and immediately got started on a well-planned and complex project. Your use of familiar food items was especially clever. That afternoon, as I was leaving school, I found Ellen, Benji, and George waiting for me. Want to hang out? Ellen asked. Do you? I asked back. All three of them nodded. I thought about those reluctant elements again, the ones they didn't want to combine. When you finally get them together, they usually formed incredibly strong bonds. Seems a shame not to take advantage of all of our work cleaning your room, Ellen said. Good point. I didn't have the heart to tell them that half of the floor had vanished again. They'd find out for themselves soon enough. On the other hand, it would give us something to do. There was one other thing I had to tell them, though. This time, I think we should make our own snacks. They all agreed about that, too. So that was David Lubar's story. Um, that's kind of the great thing about these collections of short stories. You get to read a lot of different authors. This is actually my favorite one, I think, so far. Um, up next, there's a graphic novel. So that's a little spoiler alert, and I'll try to figure out what best way to uh, beam that out to you guys. So I hope you have a great day. Uh, explore the website. I'm going to have a form posted for you guys soon to fill out. I'm going to start my own class, I believe, next Monday. Uh, so I just need a bit of information before you get started. Have a great day. Stay home. Stay safe.